All right, so to kick things off here, something that some of you might not know yet if you didn't play any of the pre-release demo builds of this game, is that originally there was going to be a few more playable characters in Pizza Tower than just Peppino and Gustavo for those two levels or whatever. And these playable characters are actually three of the bosses that you encounter in the game, with each of them being referenced by a single letter in the game's code. V for Vigilante, N for The Noise, and Pepperman is referenced as M, actually, since P is already taken by Peppino. What's awesome, though, is that by fiddling around with the game's coding, remnants of these playable characters can actually be reinstated into the game. You can essentially swap Peppino's animations for the corresponding ones for each other playable character, and you can also basically re-implement their moveset and characteristics, too. And out of all the characters that have leftover functionality, Pepperman is the most limited. Now apparently, he was only planned to have been playable in the Refrigerator, Refrigerador, Freezerator level, and what remains of his moveset is really basic. He can dash left and right, ground pound, as well as taunt, but only mid-air for some reason. So yeah, his moveset is quite limited, making it pretty difficult to play through the game in this current state. Pepperman is also the only one of these playable characters that was never even playable in any build released to the public. Then next is the Vigilante, who would have actually been able to use his gun against enemies instead of a dash attack like Peppino. Now one interesting quirk about the Vigilante is that when dashing, his speed caps out at Mach 3, and as such he isn't able to break through the metal blocks seen in the game. To combat this, he was intended to have been able to use his dynamite attack that's seen in the boss fight to break these. However, this move was coded for using a fourth button or key input which was removed from the game, and as such this move can't really be used so any stages with metal blocks aren't exactly playable with the Vigilante. Furthermore, he also can't use any of Peppino's transformations, so any stages that require those are also a wash. The Vigilante is also unique from the rest of the characters in the fact that unlike every other character who can't die from taking damage, he actually does have a health system coded in for him. The default starting value is 100 hit points, taking damage would take away 25 HP, and health was to be recovered by collecting pizza toppings throughout a level with the mini ones recovering 1 HP and the bigger ones would recover 20. It sounds like an interesting mechanic, but I must say, in the spirit of the Wario Land games, I much prefer there to not be a health system. And finally, the last of the unused playable characters is the Noise. Now whereas Pepperman is the least developed playable character, the Noise is basically the opposite as he was playable in the game for years during its development demos up until around mid-2022. Although when re-implemented into the game now, his moveset matches Peppino for reasons we'll get to in a bit, in earlier points in developing this game, he actually had his own unique moveset including using a jetpack, being able to bounce around using his pogo stick, and more. Although it's not 100% clear why all of these characters were only kept as bosses and their playable aspects removed, the main developer of the game, McPig, had stated that he didn't really want half of the playable characters to be restricted, I assume in terms of their movesets, so I guess in order to keep the level experience uniform across the board, the decision to keep the baseline moveset was chosen. And this philosophy was especially seen in how the moveset of the noise was changed. I alluded to it a bit earlier, but probably the main reason for the moveset change is that there's actually a whole two-player co-op mode for the game that was scrapped. In this multiplayer mode, players could either help each other out to clear a stage or grief each other if they were feeling a bit more competitive, with each player striving to get a higher score. And yeah, in order for both players to be on even playing grounds with neither having any advantages or disadvantages, the decision to create moveset parity regardless of which character was chosen was made, and as such, after going through several changes and revisions, ultimately the noise had his moveset altered to just be a copy of Peppino's. Now I think a multiplayer aspect to this game would be awesome, so I'm really hoping that one day something like this does get implemented, but I'm sure based on how fast this game is, it might be tough to implement unless each player would have their own screen. Interestingly enough though, there are still some remnants of this mode left in the game, but unfortunately they aren't exactly complete. Far from it in fact. And this co-op mode isn't the only mode that didn't make it into the final game, as there's also a hard mode for Pizza Tower that was scrapped. 
And unlike the co-op mode we just went over, this hard mode is found much more complete and in fact is actually really easy to re-enable in the game to boot. Basically, all you have to do is enable the debug command in the Steam launch options, press F5 to open the command window in-game, and then simply type in hard mode true and that's it, the hard mode is now re-enabled. Anyways, as you've been seeing, the main gimmick that hard mode would enable is the introduction of another scrapped character, Snick EXE, who is definitely not a parody of anything else. Now, Snick EXE actually wasn't intended to be the main obstacle in this mode, and he's only slapped in here as a placeholder for the intended enemy that was to be known as the Pizza Mancer. But anyways, in this hard mode, as is seen here, Snick will basically be an extra annoyance and will throw down enemies to try and mess you up. Now the extra problem is that you actually don't want to defeat any of the enemies thrown down by Snick, as for every two that are defeated, this also scrapped heat meter here will also go up. And once maxed out, Snick can spawn up to four enemies at a time, and it isn't until you take damage that the meter will go back down to zero. It's a cool little extra mode that I think could have offered a bit of extra challenge to those that are absolutely crazy at this game like some of the top speedrunners are. And speaking of the heat meter, now's a good time to dive a bit deeper into it. Although it did make its way into this hard mode as we discussed, this actually wasn't the original way it was intended to work. Instead of being tied to Snick throwing down enemies, it was instead once a big part in a level's progression as you would increase the heat meter the more enemies that you would defeat. And as the meter increased, different effects would be triggered, enemies would start to move faster, and then ultimately there would have been a rage mode where enemies would unleash new unique moves that they otherwise wouldn't ever use. Similar to the combo system that is seen in the final game, the goal was to keep killing more enemies as fast as possible to get a higher score, while also avoiding taking damage. Feelings around this heat meter were apparently pretty divided in the community, with some fans not really feeling it was a good addition, and as such, over time the mechanic of introducing exclusive moves was cut and the heat meter would only allow for extra score, until ultimately the mechanic was removed. Well, at least mostly, as in the final release of the game, the Tribe Cheese, Pizza Slug, and Shrimp Thug enemies actually have their filled heat meter attacks enabled by default, so in a turn of events, their normal intended attacks are the ones that go unused. And there are actually even more remnants from this, as several otherwise unused graphics for the heat meter are left over in the game too. These include the meter and internal red bar, a color palette showing how the colors would change as the temperature increased from cool to hot, as well as a TV graphic for Peppino for once he had reached a certain heat level, which can actually still be loaded into the game, and this is also still referenced in the game's coding. And this actually isn't the first iteration of the heat meter either, as there are even earlier assets for it left over in the game too. The first known version was seen like how it is left over in the hard mode, a dial with four pizza faces with expressions ranging from happy all the way to absolutely enraged. We can also see that there were once plans to mirror the pizza faces, and there were also ideas for different effects on the meter itself too. Another iteration for this heat meter idea was instead named Style Bar in the game's code, and for this, thought bubbles would have appeared above Pepino's face in the heads-up display from mild, to antsy, to mad, and then finally the maximum level, crazy, where at this point some enemies' graphics would switch to using a different color palette, like the pepperoni goblins turning purple. There were also graphics of a meter that would slowly drain if you waited around long enough without doing anything to extend your combos. And furthermore, there are also several additional graphics for combos associated with different score multiplier mechanics that were apparently a predecessor to the heat meter. The first of these iterations was implemented in late April 2019, and although these haven't been seen in any of the currently publicly accessible pre-release builds of the game, this mechanic would have had these graphics in the top middle of the screen and would describe the currently achieved multiplier. Cheesy would be a basic 1x multiplier, mildly spicy would give 2 points, then there's stupid, not bad but not hot dog, and finally, of course, hot dog, which would offer a whopping 16 points for every enemy defeated or topping collected. Then, the second revision of this combo meter mechanic was implemented in early May of 2019, and would have featured several graphics that would have appeared under the TV heads-up display graphic, and each multiplier would have resulted in a different pizza type. 
Pizza Pizza, OK Pizza, Super Pizza, and finally Devil Pizza. It seems like there were a bunch of really cool ideas for this meter, but it looks like to keep things simple, the more basic combo meter that we got is what the developers had settled on keeping as the method of increasing score for defeating enemies. Now before we move on, if you're enjoying the content and would like to help support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. It really helps me out a bunch and you'll also get some really nifty channel perks to boot. Click on the join button below for more information. Anyways, next let's switch gears and talk about the numerous unused graphics that are left over even in the current release of the game. And here I first want to start with some of the most basic looking graphics as they're basically just concept sketches. And these are for several scrapped attacks as well as phases for the final boss in the game, Pizza Head. For starters, there are some early sketches of Pizza Head looking down, extending his arm to grab something beneath a level, and then grabbing a spicy picture of himself before shoving it back down as he does in his battle. And then there's also this sketch of him throwing something, and this was actually seen as part of an attack where Pizza Head would literally throw Peppino's face at Peppino. Now one sketch that reveals something a bit different is that here we can see that once Pizza Face was defeated, initially the idea was to see Pizza Head controlling it instead of him just sitting on the throne as he ultimately ended up doing. Then next there's also this early sketch of Pizza Head jumping out of Pizza Face instead of just getting launched upwards as is seen in the final game. Oh, and we're just getting started here as there are a whole bunch more early sketch graphics of Pizza Lad over here. Next are several sketches of some more unused attacks for the fight. These include him appearing in a musketeer getup, him getting ready to throw the Peppino face attack we mentioned earlier. There's actually a whole animation left over of Pizza Head opening up a present which would have resulted in a backwards boxing glove spring attack. There's a scrapped attack in which Pizza Head would carry and drop a large bomb before then running away from it. And then there's also some sort of scrapped attack where he would have pulled up a derpy looking rat and just ate it. Yeah. Now lastly for these sketches, there are several that appear to reveal a third phase in the fight against Pizza Head that was cut. Originally, the fight wasn't going to consist of the gauntlet of fighting previous bosses encountered in the game. And instead, there would have been a final phase where Pizza Head would become enraged and would have had some new moves to utilize. These include a dash punch or dash face slam into the ground move, him screaming get out at Peppino, a spinning punch and spinning kick attack, a punch with a giant arm as well as a kick where his leg would seemingly extend a great distance. Interestingly enough, as seen in one of the pre-release builds of the game where a fight using the sketches of Pizza Head was actually implemented, out of all of these scrapped phase 3 attacks, only the extendo leg was actually ever programmed. Now apparently, according to the devs, they wanted to keep Pizza Head's image as being a goofy clown and not a crazed fella. So yeah, I guess they decided to remove this third phase and slipped in refighting the prior bosses instead. I think it's too bad because I felt like the final phase of fighting Pizza Head was a bit underwhelming. Now next up, although moving away from the concept sketches, the next graphics all still look quite unfinished. First, there are several placeholder graphics that are left over from an old Patreon exclusive demo of the game. Since at the time there weren't proper graphics for displaying a rank or level name, these placeholders were implemented to display the level name, a title card graphic showing the build version and some new additions, here being the wall climbing as well as the fire ass transformation, as well as a placeholder graphic for the lack of score and rank for a level. Considering how far away this demo was from the release of the game, it's pretty wild to see that these are still kicking around in the game's files. Then next up, there are several black and white placeholder sprites of Peppino as well as the noise meant for the cutscene where the balloon slams into the background during the transition to the second phase of the fight. Here we can see the duo looking worried, screaming, and then once again looking, uh, quite concerned. Moving on, there are four early versions of the card scene at the fast food saloon level, as well as several graphics for the heads-up display that went unused, including graphics that would actually show your speed level, a slot that would indicate if you had a key in your inventory, a scrapped reload timer that would have appeared as a pizza and would indicate how long you had to wait in between shotgun blasts, as well as a graphic for it completing, 
And there's also a scrapped monitor, which would have seemingly indicated that you had a backup shotgun. And this is actually part of a scrapped mechanic that was seen in the Sage 2019 demo build of Pizza Tower, where back then you still had to purchase shotguns for Pepino using pizza coins, and if you bought two of them, you would have a backup on hand if you lost the first shotgun by taking damage. And lastly, there are two more bouncing HUD graphics that were scrapped. A bullet that's a remnant from earlier plans where Pepino always had a gun and could hold up to three bullets, as well as this jerry can that was part of a scrapped pizza cutter chainsaw attack which was never implemented in any playable form, but was actually something that dates back all the way to some of the earliest stages of this game's development when the game was still known as Pizza Massacre. And as I'll mention later on, despite never being properly implemented in any of the publicly available demo builds, jerry cans were seen as an obtainable item in a later demo, but they still served no purpose there. Now next, there are a plethora of early and unused animations for the heads of the Vigilante, the Noise, as well as Pepino. Similar to how the monitor heads-up display system works for Pepino in the final game, these are a leftover from earlier demo builds where just the head of the character you were playing as would appear on screen and would change depending on what occurs in gameplay. For the Vigilante, he's got an idle animation, one for taking damage, one for healing by collecting toppings as we went over earlier, one for speeding up, taking out enemies, as well as one meant to be seen during pizza time. Then for the noise, I guess being more of a fleshed out playable character at the time, he's got a lot more of these and there's everything from idle to getting and using the knight transformation, running at Mach 1, 2, 3, and 4, one for holding a bomb and getting blasted by one, taking damage, unlocking a door, ground pounding, taking out enemies, being low on health, being angry, as well as one apparently meant for taking the lead in the scrapped co-op mode. And finally, we of course have Peppino himself, who for some reason for these files has his name misspelled. For these, Peppino largely has animations for the same situations as the noise we just went over, but additionally, he also has one for rolling as well. Although Peppino still had a default white shirt and hat in earlier builds, interestingly, in these, as you can see, he's seen in his yellow attire. Now this yellow coloring is apparently used as to not conflict with any other color palettes that Peppino can color his clothes, and since Peppino's eyes and teeth use white, his regular white attire had to be changed to something else. Then, also left over in the game, are graphics for this old pause screen which would have featured only three options, each with a different Peppino facial expression, continuing, retrying a level, as well as returning back to the title screen. Next up, Captain Pizza Goblin, as seen in the Crust Cove stage, originally had a much different design. He looked much more human-like and had a red tricorn hat instead of the black skull one that the final design uses, he would yell fire, seemingly after every shot, which I could see getting annoying. And then lastly, there's also this unused ending animation for when a player would clear the section that he's seen in, where his own cannon would explode on him, which I think is much better than the animation that was used in the final cut. Next up, we got a pair of unused animations for the old design of Pillar John. Now you might have seen this old design if you found the old tower secret in the first floor of the game. I think these little secrets are awesome as they show off a bunch of early and unused concepts, most of which we'll dive into a potential future video, but for now our focus is on this guy. The first leftover unused animation for Mr. Pillar here is one in which he is seen opening his mouth. And this is actually from an also scrapped mechanic in which before bashing him to activate pizza time was even a thing and pizza toppings were to be used for progressing to the floor boss, the player would have instead had to feed John Pillar all five toppins within a level to proceed. And after feeding him all five toppins, he would give the player a nice grin, and this is also an animation that's still left over in the final game too. And while on the topic of scrapped mechanics, next up we have this screen that would have been used after beating the game. Instead of being given a completion rank which you could improve by going back and finding more secrets and such, originally, once you had beaten the game, as you see in this graphic, your judgement would have been final, and you couldn't do anything to improve your judgement other than to delete the save or just start another one. 
I think this would have been a bit excessive and probably would have turned off many players from trying again, so I'm glad this change was made. And now, last up for this video, there are several sprites of either early versions of Peppino's transformations or some that never got to fully see the light of day. Originally seen in the credits for a 2018 demo build of the game, there were basically teasers of upcoming transformations that were planned to be added. For those that did end up getting implemented, we got early transformation graphics for the cheese and cheese ball, barrel, as well as pizza box. And then for the transformations that didn't quite make the cut, there's a sprite for the scrapped meteor transformation, some spinning transformation that would make Peppino seemingly get sick, one where he would become red, one where he would seemingly run fast, one where he would get drunk or something, and this seems to have taken inspiration from Wario Land's Crazy Wario. There's some sort of transformation where Peppino would become green with a red nose, a transformation where Peppino would get absolutely jacked, one where he would become Swiss cheese or something, and finally one where he would become some sort of superhero, again likely taking inspiration from Wario's Wario Man, but it obviously also bears resemblance to the Noises get up, so my speculation is that maybe this would have swapped Peppino's moveset to the Noises back when it was still different. Although I am certainly a big fan of the designs and range of all the different transformations that were implemented in the game, I still can't help but feel a bit disappointed that we didn't get at least a few more of these, but I guess ultimately they may not have worked in the game with how the devs had intended. Pizza time. Alright, so to start, let's kick things off for this video by taking a deeper look at some of Peppino's unused transformations. First, as we went over in my last video, several of these were shown off as teasers in old demo builds of Pizza Tower as potential transformations that were planned to be added to the game. And although it was difficult to tell what they would have been just based on their images, thankfully the game's main developer, McPig, had given some more context for most of these in the Pizza Tower Discord. Now first we got the animatronic Peppino transformation that appears to have been later reworked into Peshino. Apparently this transformation originally would have allowed the player to make Peppino play on his accordion, which would have put certain enemies to sleep. And then the player would be able to revert back to normal by apparently just running into some spikes. Now as some of you had pointed out in my last video, animatronic Peppino here wasn't completely scrapped, but rather had its effect reworked to be more of a downside than a helpful ability as seen in the FNAF inspired level Don't Make a Sound, where after getting bamboozled, Peppino will become an animatronic which will reduce his movement and also cause the player to lose 50 points over time. Then next is this green spinning Peppino, aptly titled just Spinny Peppino, and wouldn't you know, this transformation would make you spin fast and fly up high before spinning back down, where you would be stunned for a bit after that. And if this sounds familiar, this basically appears to be like Kirby's tornado copy ability from the Kirby games. So it turns out I was completely wrong when it came to my speculation on the superhero Peppino transformation here, thinking it might have transformed Peppino moveset into the old noise moveset. In actuality, this transformation would apparently simply allow Peppino to fly around and destroy metal blocks when running into them. The latter part is something you can do by default, so I guess flying around was the main draw with this one. The Shy Peppino transformation here is next, and this would apparently have been activated when coming into contact with this enemy that was scrapped from the game known simply as Pizza Lady. And in this Shy state, Peppino wouldn't be able to dash until touching some spikes to return back to the normal state. So yeah, if you have trouble talking to girls, don't worry, so does Peppino. Then next up is Meteor Peppino, which would have been triggered by another unused enemy, Muscle Pizza, who would punch Peppino into the state, sending him flying horizontally. If you hit a slope after being punched, you would have bounced off of it, or otherwise you would just slam into the next wall. Now interestingly, despite going unused, these animations that you've been seeing are actually still found left over in the release build of this game. Now next we have this transformation that was known as Caffeinated Peppino, and it would have been activated when yet another scrapped enemy, Cool Kid, would toss some coffee or energy drinks, probably G Fuel, at the player. Use code Tetra to save 20-30% to off at gfuel.com. In this hyped up state, Peppino would run really fast and would just keep running until he got hit. 
Now next we got a pretty interesting scrapped idea with Hungry Peppino here. In this state, Peppino would apparently be forced to follow the scent of some food and apparently wouldn't stop until he reached it. And finally, I think the best description for one of these scrap transformations is for Muscle Peppino here, where the added ability was simply described as makes you able to destroy everything. Now, how far everything would have extended isn't clear, but I reckon you would simply be able to break any blocks and destroy all enemies with ease. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, there wasn't any more context provided for these three transformations. But at least for this one, I think it's still safe to assume that, likely being a reference to Crazy Wario from the Wario Land games, this transformation would have been similar. And these aren't the only transformations that were scrapped, as next, there's also Clown Peppino who is seen as a small easter egg in the game. But originally, this would have been featured in a scrapped level simply called Mansion, and then meant to have been seen in the Oregano Desert level. And there's also a Pizza Car transformation that was once meant to be obtained from an also unused Pizza Car enemy. I don't know man, this guy looks pretty chill, I wouldn't really want to carjack him. Anyways, in this pizza car, the player could simply move and jump. It doesn't sound like all that interesting of an ability, so I can see why this one was scrapped. Now next up, we got some transformations that are seen in the final release of the game, but either work slightly differently and or have some associated graphics that didn't end up getting used. First up, the Knight Transformation, and this one used to work slightly differently in older demo builds of the game. The old knight had a really short range little stubby sword attack that was pretty useless outside of breaking certain things including some wooden walls. And this used to be one of the few abilities that could break super metal blocks which were ultimately scrapped from the game. Next, the fire mouth ability would have also worked slightly differently to how it's seen in the final release. Unlike the final version where you have more control over fire mouth Peppino and can make him stop in place, the original version had Peppino constantly moving, and unlike the final where you could keep the ability until you take damage or reach a priest, the original would only last for 10 seconds before an animation of Peppino chugging some milk would cure him of the ailment. Later on in development, an eventually scrapped ability to shoot fireballs was added, and the player could also get some free milk from this very generous cow in order to remove the transformation. And interestingly enough, this cow actually did end up appearing in the freezer level near the lap 2 portal, where there it will still remove your ability too. Next up, probably everyone's favorite bird in the game, Mort. Although originally, when first introduced, he functioned around the same as he does in the final, instead of losing him when reaching a priest, you would instead have lost him to a comically large pile of corn. Interestingly, between his first introduction and the final version of Pizza Tower, there was one demo build where Mort actually functioned a bit differently too. Instead of chilling on Peppino's hat, he would have started to just follow the player around and could then be thrown around as well. And if you're wondering why I had like three Morts following me around at the same time, yeah, I have no idea, it was pretty weird. Next, even prior to one of the first early test builds of Pizza Tower, the original barrel transformation was planned to have an added ability which would let you use it to float on water. And then, much later in development, they were once the only way of destroying special barrel blocks. The original weenie was to be obtained by a scrapped enemy called Camembert Squire, and originally you could jump without having to ditch the weenie, and the ability didn't let you turn, as much like many of the other early transformations, it would send you automatically moving in only one direction. And the same goes for the rocket, originally there was no ability to turn it around at all. The original box transformation didn't give you extra jumps and would restrict you from dashing and was basically just used to slip under smaller passages with conveyor belts, basically being squished Wario from Wario Land 3, and these hands were basically these things also from Wario Land 3 which would pull you back to normal. Sticky cheese used to also let you stick to conveyor belts and would also let you fit through shorter gaps without having to crouch. And the ghost transformation also used to be different as you had to keep mashing the jump button to fly around in the air, kind of like Kirby. And originally, instead of becoming a ghost by touching a mushroom ghost, the player was actually going to just straight up die after getting shot by the ranch shooter. Now I've seen some people in the comments suggesting that this Swiss cheese transformation might have been related to this, but since this graphic predates the ranch shooter, these probably aren't related. 
Anyways, after turning into a ghost, in order to return back to normal, instead of finding a priest at this point, the player would actually have to find a tombstone, after which a casket would quite literally emerge from the ground to exhume the still very much alive body of the player. And interestingly, there were also two different kinds of these tombstones, one that was stationary, as well as this one that you could actually carry around and bring with you wherever you want. Now, one of the biggest changes that was made to the ghost ability is that at one point, seen in a private playtester build of the game, with the ghost transformation, the player could actually use it to take control of other enemies and use their abilities. Yeah, basically turning this transformation into Mario Odyssey's Cappy. I think this would have been a really cool mechanic in the game, so I think it's a real shame that this was cut. Now another big change is seen with how the bomb used to work compared to how it does now. Instead of just simply being a holdable and throwable item, originally, after obtaining a bomb, the player would start to constantly run in one direction, and all you could really do was jump around until it exploded in your hands or you reached a bomb block. Basically, it was the flaming Wario from Wario Land 3. Now in some builds, you could also throw the bomb while carrying it, but this ability was removed and re-added at various points in developing this game. And finally, although the ball transformation is, again, seen in the game, originally, similar to Wario's roll move in the Wario Land series, it could have been activated at will by simply just pressing down while standing on a sloped platform, instead of only from getting kicked by certain enemies. To add to this, there are also a few unused graphics for Peppino left over in the final game that are a remnant of this ability. There's him starting to slide down and transition into the ball phase, as well as this sign teaching you this move that was seen in older demo builds and this is also left over in the final cut of the game. Now I've mentioned some of the other unused playable characters in my previous video, but they also have various animations for the game's transformations, as I guess a remnant from back when they were still playable. For one, the Noise had his own set of night animations, from picking up the sword, or sork, from the stone to apparently eat some spaghetti, to walking, jumping, falling, and everything in between. There's animations for the ball transformation, flying with Mort, as well as throwing him, rolling in a barrel, riding a weenie, some unique animations for his fire mouth transformation, including him eating the spicy chicken wing, running with his mouth on fire, as well as his head turning into ash after getting some milk, some for the fire butt transformation, Ghost Noise, who would bear some resemblance to the Boo enemies from the Mario series, unique animations for Cheese Ball, Bomb, Rocket, Clown, a Tiny Noise, which would have been his version of Peppino's Boxed, a Cheese Rat, which would have been the Noise's version of the Sticky Cheese transformation, and finally, probably my favorite, is instead of a shotgun, the Noise would actually get a massive minigun instead, as he is almost seen using in his boss fight before Noisette takes him away. And although most of the moveset became the same between the Noise and Peppino, this minigun actually worked differently than Peppino's shotgun, as it could fire off numerous rounds instead of a single blast. Then, surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, depending on how you look at it, there's only one unused transformation ability for the Vigilante, and that's just for his transitioning to and using the ball transformation, where it was less so a ball and more so him just slugging along. Now, one scrapped playable character I haven't gotten to talking much about yet outside of his EXE appearance as a placeholder for the scrapped Pizza Mancer enemy in the also scrapped hard mode remnant seen in the final game is Snake the Porcupine that once again is definitely not a reference to anything else. Anyways, I'll talk more about Snick once we dive deeper into some Pizza Tower demos in a future video, but for now, Snick would have also apparently been able to get a transformation similar to the Knight once called Robot Snick instead. And although definitely not scrapped, nope, don't know who could make that mistake, Snick would have also had unique animations for the fire butt transformation where he would turn into fire for Snick. Hell yeah. And lastly for Snick here, he also had unique animations for the bomb transformation where his whole body would seemingly become a bomb and he would gotta go fast before exploding. I really like Snick. I hope he ends up getting added into the game in a bigger role someday. Now, before we move away from the unused graphic stuff, in my last video I had went over several unused concept sketches for Pizza Head that were for a scrapped third phase for his fight. 
Well, as many of you had let me know in the comments, these were actually seen in an old playtester beta build where a fight against literal concept art would have happened after defeating an old version of Pizza Face. The fight appears to take place in a boxing ring, and probably the most interesting thing is that in this fight, at this stage in development, we actually had a life bar for each fighter in typical fighting game fashion. And yeah, here we can see a bunch of the scrapped attacks that we discussed in my last video, from the backwards boxing glove present, to the musketeer getup, and even the extendo leg kick. In one recording of some gameplay of this fight that was floating around the internet, music from a very old YouTube video called Ronald McDonald Insanity was playing in the background. If you've been around the internet for a while, chances are you've probably seen this at some point. Anyways, this had many people speculating that maybe this song was once intended to be added for this fight. But unfortunately, since these playtest builds have been leaked recently, it's been found that this wasn't actually the case. Additionally, there's also some more concept sketches that show off a few more aspects to the scrapped third Pizza Head phase. There's art of him yelling out his attack, showing that Peppino would have to duck down to dodge it, Pizza Head getting enraged, some flailing arm attack, then not necessarily for the scrapped phase, but there's also some earlier concept sketches of Pizza Head getting into what looks like some old soldier uniform, as well as him seemingly begging Pizza Face for forgiveness. And interestingly, there are also a few sprites that were actually made up for this fight that have seemingly never been used, and here we can see not only Pizza Head getting enraged, but also another seemingly scrapped form for Peppino, where he would go absolutely beast mode in this fight. It's pretty crazy, and it looks like, much like as the game as a whole, the original plans for this fight were really different compared to what we got in the final cut. And lastly for the graphics, not technically unused, but rather normally unseen, are these block fellas, as well as... whatever these are. Now these are actually blocks that are used to hide the secret areas that Peppino can break through, and if you enable seeing collisions in the game via the game's debug menu, you actually can re-enable the ability to see them. This design was apparently once intended to replace the metal blocks that are seen in the game, but this idea was apparently met with some negative feedback, so they were just kept as hidden blocks instead. Hey, I guess at least they weren't removed completely. And then secondly, these things have been seen throughout the game's development history and appear to be used for platforms that you can jump through from beneath them. And yeah, these two can be seen again by enabling seeing collision. It's pretty interesting, especially when they're extremely wide like this. Alright, next up, let's talk about some unused audio files that are left over in the final game. Now, although there are various sound effects and several tracks from the soundtrack that aren't heard in the game, or some that were once planned to be added but never were, here I'm just focusing on the ones that are actually still left over in the release build. For starters, there's a short track titled Time's Up that was meant to play after the timer runs out and Pizza Face catches you. And this was ultimately replaced by the eloquently titled track, Your Fat Ass Slows You Down. We then got a track just titled Spaghetti that's listed in the files as Medieval Remix, and this is actually a remix of the Cold Spaghetti track made by Clashy Jitto. And finally, there's a track titled PT Entrance, and this appears to be an older version of the Unearthly Blues track featuring a loud as hell guitar track, as well as some different samples. Now next up are a pair of music tracks that can be heard in the game in one form or another, but their original intention was much different. For example, the track Pizza Mayhem, which can only be heard in the game's sound test, was actually originally supposed to be the game's opening theme song.
Yeah, this song went from the planned opening theme to being relegated to the sound test where only a fraction of players would ever hear it. Talk about downgrade. And secondly, there's also a track titled Choosing the Toppings, and this one actually isn't in the sound test and can only be heard in the credits roll if you wait long enough. Now, before being relegated to this bot where also many fewer players would hear it, it was actually once intended to be used as the background theme for an apparently scrapped level editor that was also once planned for Pizza Tower. And lastly, as a bit of some cool trivia, on Mr. Sauceman, the Pizza Tower composer's website, we can see a bunch of his work over the years. And among these is a scrapped game that he worked on in 2017 called Betrace. And if we take a listen to the song here, you might hear something similar. Yeah, if this song sounds familiar, it appears that although this game was scrapped, this song was eventually repurposed as the final boss theme in Pizza Tower. Definitely a good thing that the song ended up getting reused because it absolutely slaps. Alright, so first, let's kick things off by having a look at some unused objects that are left over in the game. Now, I mentioned the tombstone for the old version of the ghost transformation in my last video, but it's actually still left over in the files of the final cut of the game. For those that didn't see the previous video, basically instead of needing to find a priest guy to return to normal, in older pre-release builds the player would have to reach a tombstone, and this stone variant is one that could be picked up and thrown around to get through certain areas. Then next up there are several blocks that could have only been destroyed with certain transformations left over unused here too. For example, there's this one which would have obviously required the barrel to bust through, and then we got this one which would have required the ball transformation, one for the cheese ball, as well as a G block requiring Gustavo and Brick to bust through. Other unused leftover blocks include two alternate designs for ice blocks, one for a scrapped thermometer mechanic in the freezer level, and these ones that would have had you slide in the night transformation. There's a secret destroyable block, which was a version of the big breakable blocks that would be exclusively seen in secret rooms in the game, and we'll get to them later in this video, but these are also seen in some unused secret rooms that are left over in the game too. There's a glass block object that would have protected the treasure seen in the game, there's this bouncy tomato block that would bounce a player upwards, and there's also an unused enemy block featuring some artwork of the cheese slime enemy. Now these were seen in pre-release versions of Pizza Tower and would require the player to throw an enemy at them in order to break them. And lastly, there's a very basic unused sprite of a Mach 4 block, which as suggested by the name, would require the player to be traveling at least at Mach 4 speed in order to break it. Then next up, we have this unused object listed as Golden Door, and it is indeed a door that is golden, go figure. And there's actually a duplicate of this door listed as Snick Challenge, which was something seen in the Sage 2019 demo of this game. Anyways, this door is actually a remnant from early demo builds of the game, where it was seen when getting to the end of a level or at the end of Snick's challenge. The next unused object is Noise Bomb Spawner, and this is a leftover from earlier demos where the noise would peep into a level through a window and, as the name implies, would throw down a bomb towards Peppino. This object can also still be loaded into the game, and surprisingly still works flawlessly as it was intended. Interestingly, it should also be noted that this object uses an old design for the noise where his hat would have appeared more so like a pizza, and he also had a pizza logo on his chest. And there's actually another pair of unused objects related to the noise, Noise Trap Rock and Noise Rock. And essentially, these would have had the noise pushing down a rock at Peppino in order to bamboozle him. I kind of like the idea of the noise randomly doing stuff like this in a level in order to mess you up. Then next up is this phone on a pedestal known as Phone Booth, and no, this isn't the same phone booth that is seen in the hub world. Now a different variant of this was actually seen in a few demo builds as part of the title screen where Peppino would answer it to start the game. 
However, when loading this phone booth object, Remnant, into the current release of the game, Peppino actually has a different animation where he will start, like, screaming after he picks up the phone. Doing this will also start a timer that pops up on the screen and counts down faster than normal. Oh yeah, and you also can't move at all in this state, so the game basically softlocks, at least until the timer runs out. Anyways, the next unused object is a red balloon, and as balloons tend to do in video games, these would cause the player to bounce upwards when touching them. There's this large pile of corn that, as we went over in my previous video, used to be the way that Mort would leave the player instead of finding a priest. And you are now required by law to say hi to Mort in the comments. Another rather interesting leftover object that goes unused is the giant pizza. In earlier builds of Pizza Tower, collecting these would reward the player with a whopping thousand points, and these were typically seen as the main prize for finding a secret room. Then we have this very early looking object known simply as Cheese Boat, and this large boat of cheese was supposed to be used in an older version of the hub area and would help you reach certain areas that would be normally inaccessible without it. Next, there's a whole ton of unused enemy object data that also remains left over in Pizza Tower 2. Most of these are early versions of enemies either seen in the game, were seen in earlier pre-release builds, or are only seen in some of the secret rooms found in the hub world that often show early or unused designs. But for the most part, yeah, these aren't seen in the game as they were intended. First, I mentioned this fella in my previous video as part of the scrapped pizza car transformation, but apparently this fella's name is Phil, and really he just looks like he's a guy trying to get to his day job. Next up, there's a purple trash can that, similarly to older versions of the trash can enemies, would shoot out balls of cheese which could be used to transform into the cheese ball transformation. In the final game, the idea of using any trash cans for the cheese balls was scrapped, and instead only the giant cheese slimes have the ability to turn Peppino into a cheese ball. Then, other unused enemy objects include a police car weenie that would have appeared in the city level and would have chased you around and could only be defeated with a parry. Apparently, if it did end up catching you, it would have brought you to a prison cell. Then there's an early version of the grabby hands that also have an unused functionality where they would give a thumbs up to you if you would give it a high five with Pepino's slap attack that was cut earlier on in development. There's an early version of the clown mado enemy that would bounce you up and couldn't be defeated, a cheese Pepino robot that would have been a yellow variant that had the ability to shoot out cheese balls to turn Pepino into the sticky cheese transformation, a dummy test enemy that, despite looking like a cheese slime, functions differently and can only be defeated by mashing the dash button. A scrapped meatball boulder enemy that was seen in earlier versions of Oregano Desert and actually couldn't harm the player and was used to destroy blocks and other objects. There's Mr. Carr, who, although makes an appearance in the game in Pig City and the Graffiti area, was supposed to be an enemy that would require the player to be running at least at Mach 3, and after being defeated, he would have exploded. There's a leftover early version of the trash pan enemies who, like we went over earlier, would have launched cheese balls instead of giving Peppino the ability to ride its lid. There's leftover data for a little Pepperman bomb that was seen in the Pepperman boss fight in an old demo of the game from 2018. And similarly, the noise bomb is also left over, and this was seen in a fight against the noise that never made it to the final cut of the game, and here, the noise bomb would follow you around much like a toppin. Then next, there's an early version of the cardboard tank enemy that originally, instead of just standing in place, it would have actually used its wheels and would charge towards Peppino. And in addition to spawning cheese slimes, it could only have been defeated by throwing another enemy at it, and after defeat, it would drop some pizza slices for the player. Then also, as we discussed in my previous video, here we got the Camembert Squire enemy that once, after defeating it, was the way that the player would obtain the weenie to ride it. Furthermore, there's also an older version of this enemy that couldn't be grabbed like basically every other enemy in the game, and would also leave behind a trail effect when moving around. Then next, although the shrimp thugs are seen in the Pig City level, there are actually two additional variants for them that go unused. And although titled green and blue respectively, their color palettes actually don't match their names. Anyways, the green version would try to get up close to Peppino and would throw trash objects at him, and the blue version would act similar to the darker knife-throwing shrimps that are seen in the game. And similarly, there's data left over for a variant of Kentucky Kenny called Kentucky Lenny, who as was seen in older builds would have had a slightly different color palette and more importantly would have thrown fireballs at you instead of just some hot chicken. Next, there's an enemy called a bear trap that fittingly is just a bear trap in a pizza box. 
It would clamp down on the player and then this also unused red button would appear, basically instructing you to mash the jump button to escape it. And lastly for the leftover unused enemies, we got an early version of Fake Pepino. So if you didn't know, before Fake Pepino was turned into a boss, the plan for him was to either show up after activating pizza time or after picking up a key, similar to the Phanto enemies from Mario games. Then, after spawning in, he would have been impossible to defeat and would chase Peppino around on the way back to the exit. The fake Peppino would have actually copied the player's movement, so no matter what you do, he would always be only a second or two behind you. I recently personally experienced some of this in an older playtester build where this early Peppino can be seen in a level titled Top that was scrapped, and honestly, it's pretty unnerving. Then, also related to fake Peppino, left over unused are his arms and legs, and these were apparently meant to have stuck out of walls and would attack the player too. Now those are the enemies that go unused, but there are also a few behaviors for some enemies that were scrapped for the final build too. And these are actually part of the scrapped heat meter mechanic that I went over in my first video where in older pre-release builds, getting combos and filling up the meter would cause enemies to perform new unique moves, and yeah, I guess at least a few of these are still left over in the final game too. These include the pizza soldiers whipping out a pizza cutter, Pinacools doing a spin attack, and this one unfortunately isn't left over in the game, the cardboard tank dashing forward like we went over earlier, then similarly the fork knight would also use a jetpack to charge forward, and the pincer also had a similar lunge attack, mini johns would do some sort of air attack, the ninja slices would have had a rapid punch move that would fire out projectiles, the Swedish monkeys were to throw down some angry versions of the bananas, the cheese slimes would swing a bat, the flying anchovies would inflate themselves and drop down, the pickles would duplicate, the UF olives would have dropped the olive trooper enemies, the spit cheese enemies would have spat out a bigger projectile than normal, and lastly the noise goblins would have shot out an alternate arrow that would have homed in on the player. Now, I think alternate attacks like this would have been pretty cool, but I hear this is a pretty contentious topic, so I'm curious what you think about the removal of these. Then, similar to these, in my previous videos, I also went over a different version of the heat meter titled the Style Bar, and after defeating enough enemies to reach the crazy state, certain enemies would get a unique color swap. The Pizzards would get a red outfit, and Pepperoni Goblins would become purple, which is a remnant from the old Halloween demo build of the game. Mini Johns would turn into a more pinkish color, Swedish Monkeys would have lighter fur with red pants and a red helmet, and finally the Fork Knights would get some nice golden armor. So by now, it should be no surprise that the final version of Pizza Tower has a ton of leftovers from earlier pre-release builds, and we've only scratched the surface so far. Left over from the Eggplant build of the game, we have the early placeholder Eggplant heads-up display graphic, as well as the animation for completing a stage, from when ranks were still being finalized. And there are also leftover rooms, including this old disclaimer mentioning the Eggplant build's pre-release status, as well as this level select screen that was featured in it too. And interestingly, when loaded in, this level select screen, for the most part, is still very much functional, and you can use it to start up all of the levels that appear on the menu. Then, from probably the most well-received demo build, there are several leftovers from the Sage 2019 demo. This includes the manual that was present in the demo to teach the player about enemies, transformations, the deep pizza tower lore, and more. I honestly really like this manual and all the goofy artwork that it features, I really wish something like this had been made up for the final cut of the game. Next, there are a whole bunch of other unused leftover graphics from this build as well. To start, graphics for all of the cowboy task achievements seen in the demo are left over in both the locked and unlocked states. And not only are the sprites left over, but so is the text mentioning how to unlock them, including getting S ranks in every level, getting a combo of 10, and so forth. And furthermore, one of these can actually still be unlocked by tweaking some coding remaining from Snick's challenge, and then after getting an S rank on any level, you will get the achievement unlocking graphic to pop up. And to add to all of this, remnants of the cowboy task room showcasing all of the achievements is also left over in the game, but loading into it just causes the game to crash. Also left over are graphics for the Sage 2019 building, the signs for the cowboy task room as well as for the tutorial stage, there's the very well known sign pointing towards the scrapped playable character Snick the Porcupine, yes it is him, 
And there's also graphics left over for the computers that were seen in the Sage build that served as the method of entering a given stage. One for Blood Sauce Dungeon, The Ancient Cheese, as well as Snick's Challenge, which is definitely not a reference to any sort of creepypasta of the EXE variety. There's also a similar computer for Pizzascape, but this one is a recolor from the Halloween demo and not the Sage 2019 one. Moreover, although Snick's challenge was only seen in the Sage demo, much like the game's hard mode that we went over in my first video, remnants of it are actually still left over in the final game too, and can still be somewhat enabled. Next, another interesting thing that's left over unused from earlier builds is the text bubble that once appeared coming from the Heads Up Display TV. The TV was once planned to provide some commentary as you played through a level and obtained transformations and such, and would have also shared some bits of lore with the player. Apparently, since it was deemed that not many people would have taken the time to actually read the text while playing through a level, the concept was simplified to just teaching the player how to control Peppino in the beginning stages until ultimately the decision to just scrap the concept was made. But yeah, this is another thing that can be re-enabled in the game, and if you edit the code, you can also customize the text to say whatever you'd like it to, and you can also display whichever TV screen you want to. Next up, in my last video, we went over some unused songs left over in the game, but there are also a few sound effects that never ended up getting used. These include an old sound effect for loading Peppino's shotgun, and then there are several enemy screams. As a little fun fact, these were actually recorded by a few members of the Pizza Tower Discord server as part of a contest that was held there. These would only have a rare chance of playing when defeating an enemy, and there were apparently 10 screams that won the contest, but out of these 10, only 3 are left over in the final build. Oh yeah, also here's your volume warning as two of these are, uh, pretty loud. And now, last up for this video, I mentioned a few of them earlier, but let's go over the unused rooms or areas that are left over in Pizza Tower, of which there are actually a ton of. Now, we won't be going over all of them here because we'd probably be here all day, so I just want to focus on some of the ones I found most interesting. So first, let's start things off with a few cutscenes and title screens that are left over from earlier demo builds. First we got old real title screen, and here you could either choose to erase your save file settings with the door on the right, bring up an options menu with the counter at the middle, or start the game with the phone by the bathroom on the left, which would bring up an old character select screen that would have let you choose between starting as Peppino or the noise, as we went over in my previous videos. Now what's extra interesting here is that there's also leftover functionality from an old Christmas demo of the game that can be re-enabled which will result in Santa Claus swooping in and picking up Peppino. Then next there's just title screen which is where the Santa was meant to have been seen and again this is a leftover hub entrance of sorts from the Christmas demo. Then there's real title screen which was an update to the previous one where this time the phone on the left would bring up the options menu, this door would have brought up the level select menu, and then these three doors would have represented three different save files. And then, similar to Super Mario Land 2, by picking up this bomb here and trying to enter a door, you could delete the save data for that particular file. Then moving on to the unused cutscene areas, first we got Scooter Transition, which was a precursor to the player spawning into the title screen area we went over earlier, where we can see Peppino clinging on to Santa's sack for dear life. And then there's Level Transition Cutscene, and unfortunately almost everything from this area is removed by this point, but this was the cutscene that would play during a level when progressing to a higher floor, where Peppino could have been seen climbing up some stairs. Now next up, there are a whopping total of 27 unused secret rooms left over in the game. Apparently, originally there were plans to have 6 secret rooms per stage, until this was eventually rolled back to just 3 instead. And as such, quite a few of the 3 scrap secret rooms are left over from 9 levels, including Oregano Desert, Pig City, the Ice Level with the Long Name, Blood Sauce Dungeon, Deep Dish 9, and more. Anyways, yeah, I think it's good that the choice of quality over quantity was made. Then moving on, next there are three different early iterations of the Hub Overworld area left over in the game. The earliest of these, listed as Hub Room 1, is a hub area dating back to 2020 and is a single area with doors to each of the levels from the first world, and in some builds would also have smaller doors that would lead to other levels too. 
Now, apparently, Mr. Stick can also be found here at the top, charging 25,000 points to unlock the next area. Now, despite being the earliest hub area, this one is the most complete, at least visually here. There's also a second room from this first iteration that's much less complete, and as we'll see with many of the leftover rooms going forward, the graphics aren't exactly, well, there. So we have to enable visualizing collision in order to see where we're going. Anyways, this is a very early area for the second world that basically just has entrance doors as well as another Mr. Stick unlockable area at the end. Then next up, we move on to the second iteration of the hub world that's much more expansive. And this is actually a remnant of the hub world that was seen in the September 2021 build, and let me tell ya, bigger isn't always better. I, again, recently played some of that build, and this version of the hub area is quite confusing, but it was kinda cool how beating each level would cause something to happen in the hub area that would allow you to proceed to the next level. Anyways, in the interest of time, we won't be going through the entire hub area, but if you're interested, check out my recent VOD on the Playtester build, which will be linked in the description. Anyways, it was pretty cool to see the remnants of this build, including the boxing ring where the boss fights would have occurred. And there are only three unused rooms that are a remnant of a third iteration of the hub area that was worked on quite late in developing the game, from a time where although much of the hub area was how it is seen today, the game's developer, McPig, attempted to revise the hub area one last time. He then came to the conclusion that only World 1's hub wasn't up to par, so eventually this third iteration was scrapped and just the first world was redone. Anyways, these are pretty small areas, so they aren't as interesting, but these actually do have the proper entrance doors for the stages this time around. But wait, there's more, as there's actually a total of 16 unused levels, many of which are early versions of those seen in the game. Now, for the most part, these are pretty broken and not exactly visually pleasing, and just like the hub area, if you're interested in seeing how these areas look and play as how they were more intended to, I'll kindly direct you to my recent playthrough of the demo build. That said, there are a few interesting areas among these of particular note. First, there's an unused stage known only as Exit, and as the name implies, this appears to be an old version of exiting the tower, similar to Crumbling Tower of Pizza. And just like that stage, this one is basically a gauntlet that features most enemies and mechanics that are seen in the game, like various otherwise unused stuff that we went over earlier, including some unused blocks, some that don't function properly, and some that do. Honestly, although parts of it are impossible to get through without using no clip to phase through walls, it was pretty cool to play through. Then there are also early versions of the factory, sewer, and freezer levels, a very early version of the golf stage that's a leftover from an old April Fool's build when the golf mechanic was a joke before it actually ended up getting reworked into an actual level. There's two versions of a scrapped stage known as Mansion that was relegated to just being a secret room in the hub area. A scrapped level known as Space Pinball that was seemingly mostly repurposed into Fast Food Saloon. And then there's yet another level that was intended to be a final level known as Top. This was, again, a challenge gauntlet that would feature a whole bunch of enemies and mechanics that are seen throughout the game. And I hope you're not tired of me bringing up levels that acted as a gauntlet featuring many aspects seen in the game, as there's yet another one that was a scrap stage known as Dragon Lair. Now, unlike the other ones, this wasn't meant to be a final level, but rather it was meant to be the boss stage for World 1. The stage would start with the player pressing five buttons to spawn in five Toppin Warriors, who are scrapped Power Ranger-inspired versions of the Toppins. These would then follow Peppino around as you go through the level, and unfortunately though, due to how the weenie rideable was changed, it isn't normally beatable as you can't cross these strips of pizza sauce without it. But if we fly around with no clip enabled, we can get through it and see what the rest of the area entails, including featuring the large scrapped cheese dragon boss that's seen in the old tower secret in the game, and these fellas would block your path to get to the next room. And yeah, after completing the stage, you would have obtained a large key, and this would have let you move on to the next world. And now, lastly for this video, there's one more unused boss area that I want to go over, and it's known simply as Boss B. Loading into this area reveals a small room with an even smaller bee that chases you around. Yeah, this little fella was actually once considered for being a boss in Pizza Tower. 
Anyways, if the bee touches Peppino, you will lose control of him for a few seconds as he runs around to get away from the bee. The main idea of this fight at this stage is that by pressing this red button here on the side, a puff of green smoke will be released and then blown downwards by this fan, and the goal was to try and hit the bee with this green gas. By doing so here, the bee gets stunned and will shake around for a bit. Now, at first, I didn't think that you could actually defeat this bee, but it turns out that after hitting it 8 times, the bee will disappear, Peppino will do a little dance, a giant key will drop down, and then after collecting it, you'll get your rank for completing the fight, and then will spawn into an empty void, and will then just drop off and die, before eventually getting kicked back to the game's intro sequence. Apparently, the decision to axe this fight was made since it was deemed to be more so a stage gimmick than a proper boss fight, at least compared to the others in the game. Now, I don't know about you, but I think the idea of a large Italian pizza man fighting a tiny little bee would have been great. But yeah, it would have had to have featured better gameplay than this. Now, before we get started, I do have to reiterate once again that we won't be going over all of the pre-release Pizza Tower builds in this video, as there are easily over a hundred of them. But I'll be focusing on some of the ones that I think are more important in the story of this game's development, as well as a bigger focus on those that have been made publicly available. So, on that note, although it may not be the first build ever created, the first one that's publicly documented dates all the way back to July 15th, 2018, and it's simply known as the Early Test Build. For starters here, this build features a different moveset for Peppino. He lacks any sort of attack move, there's no wall running yet, and Peppino can basically only dash, jump, and super jump. And the first of many similarities to the Wario Land series is that just like in those games, in this build, Peppino could actually jump higher than normal by holding up as he jumps. Wario Land was obviously very influential in the development of this game, so it shouldn't be surprising that various things from Wario games are used in here as placeholders. Other things borrowed from Wario games include Wario sound effects still being used for things like collecting toppings and rolling, The flaming Wario theme from Wario Land 3 plays when picking up a bomb. The Wario World stage clear jingle is used when completing the single stage available here. And more. Then onto the actual stage itself, being this early in development, it's no shocker that it isn't the most groundbreaking level you'd see, and it's basically a mix of a tutorial stage as well as a rudimentary way of showing off how some transformations like the knight work. And speaking of the knight, here it has its early controls, where it's much slower compared to the final version, and it also lets you do the rather useless little stubby jab attack. This was also way before the Priest or any other methods like that were introduced to remove transformation, so for a while, the only way to get rid of a transformation was to take damage from an enemy or touch some spikes. There are two secret rooms that can be found in this level, both of which are structurally different than in later builds and are more akin to those seen in Wario Land 4, and as you can see, they use a nice real picture of a pizza as a background. Another big change compared to the final here is of course the old heads-up display that has the speedometer, head graphic of Peppino, as well as old point counter. And this old HUD was used for most of the development of this game all the way up until an April 2021 build. Once reaching the end of the level, we can see that there's a severe lack of Pillar John. And yeah, the original way a level was going to end was to reach the treasure room where the treasure would be protected by some glass, and after breaking it open and grabbing the treasure, the noise would actually waddle on screen and press a big red button, and then pizza time would start. Although there's no pizza face yet and you don't lose toppings, pizza time works basically the same, but once you get back to the start, we can see that lap 2 works a bit different. Instead of there being a pizza portal that would take you back to the end of the level, you would have to walk all the way back yourself to pick up an extra 200 points there, and then you'd have to run all the way back once again. Yeah, definitely wasn't as slick. Then, other interesting things about this build include a different jingle when getting a timeout, 
Pepino's scream in this build is taken from a different sound library, <laughs> which, fun fact, is the same sound library that was used as a placeholder for Mario in the Super Mario 64 beta. <laughs> And there's a different background track here that's actually a cover of a song called Funiculi Funicula, but here it, of course, uses the Wario Land 4 sound font, and as such was dubbed Funiculario. So I mentioned how the bomb transformation uses the Wario Land music earlier, and it looks like, much like Wario Land 3 and 4, each transformation was intended to have unique music, as the night transformation also has its own placeholder music too. This time, it's Frog's theme from Chrono Trigger, which honestly sounds pretty dang epic. Now, unsurprisingly at this point, there's actually quite a few things left over unused in this demo build too, so let's go over a few of them here. First off, although many of the Wario Land audio placeholders are heard, there are a few that aren't. These include the Wario Land 4 minigame shop theme that was meant to be used in an also unused title screen area. as well as the elevator theme from the Virtual Boy Wario Land game. Next, there's remnants of a scrapped mechanic in which after reaching Mach 3, the player was to enter a boosted state where Peppino could go faster, do a ground pound, which at the time wasn't part of his normal moveset, and also do a super jump, and this Mach 3 ability also had unique running animations that only get used for a single frame in this build normally. Anyways, this scrapped ability, as seen in this developer footage, has been compared to the Shine Spark ability from Metroid games. Then next, what I think are the most interesting unused leftovers are various unused areas. Now, most of these are just really early and basic levels that mostly just use blue blocks, but there are also some unused levels that are a bit more polished, similar to what's normally featured in this build. Anyways, these unused areas include an early boss fight area against Pepperman where it's much smaller, making it a lot more difficult. There's a test area that was used to test various things like enemy behavior and John Pillar. And then the other rooms also seem to have tested various things, including pushing around a box, boxes that you could bounce off of, boxes that you could seemingly ride on, water that would force you a certain way, blocks that would push you back. Here we can also see the old barrel graphics, as well as the later scrapped ability to use it to float on water. There's the hooks that were scrapped, and more. Anyways, I think these rooms are pretty sweet, and it's really cool to see the game in such a rudimentary state of development. Then for the unused levels that are a bit more complete, these would have been accessible on the old title screen, an easy one, as well as a harder one that would have been hidden in this wall here. The easy level is basically another tutorial stage of sorts, and the hard one is that same level again, but with more enemies, spikes, and oh yeah, it's kinda darker, not really much to say about this one. And that's basically it for this build, but it would be a crime to not mention the derivative Peter Griffin version of this build that was built on July 21st of 2018. Yes, you heard that right, there was a joke build that quite literally just slaps in a graphic of, uh, Peppino Griffin. Hey Lois, I'm a funny pizza man. Besides this, the build remains basically the same, except for getting further in the level, which will trigger more meme audio, and this will start playing a remix of the Cool Whip exchange between Stewie and Brian from Family Guy. Yes, this is a real thing that happened. After this came several tester builds that eventually led to a publicly released Halloween demo on October 31st of 2018. And there were many additions seen in this build compared to the last one. There was a proper title screen, a sequence leading up to the pizza tower where if you didn't know about it, the ground would break apart leading to an old tutorial level, and of course the main part of this demo, a new ancient tower level. Here the player would climb several floors of the tower, John Pillar was added into the game now, but not in a way to end the level, but rather if you collect all five toppins, you could feed them to him in order to unlock the optional secret treasure room, and oh yeah, Peppino was now given an attack. He could now slap around enemies who could actually be defeated in this build. Additionally, by using some pizza coins which could now be found around the tower, the player could now buy a shotgun that could also help in ripping and tearing through enemies. 
getting through this tower would end up culminating in a boss fight at the top against none other than Pepperman. And although the character is the same as the one seen in the final, this fight is much different. The Pepper fella basically only has the one dash move here that you have to dodge, and after doing so, you could slap him around, and as he took damage, he would start to lose color until finally being defeated. And then, once defeated, the noise would once again waltz in in order to activate Pizza Time. Now, if you managed to get an S rank in this build, you would have unlocked a secret dance room, and as the name suggests, here you can just see a whole bunch of characters dancing. Now, apparently, fans were able to submit idle and dancing animations for any sort of character they would want, and as you can see, there wasn't really much quality control for them at this time, so yeah, basically anyone that made a submission had their stuff added in. Then, as far as unused stuff goes in this build, there's this strange pizza arcade image that was meant to be used in place of the Made with Game Maker Studio splash screen that normally appears when starting up most of the early demos. Now this appears to be a screenshot from a map made in Gary's Mod, but it's currently unclear exactly where this is from. Following this Halloween demo was a demo known simply as Demo 2 that was released over a month later on December 5th, 2018. In addition to the tower level from the previous build, this one also introduced a factory level that would one day be reworked into the Peppybot factory, and here the old versions of the Pizza Box and Cheese Slime transformations were featured. Additionally, the Pepperman boss fight was removed, and in both levels, finally, although still different, John Pillar is used at least part of the way to start Pizza Time. This meant that unlike most builds of Pizza Tower, here the player was required to collect all five top-ins, as you would need to feed John Pillar all five of them to unlock a door that leads to the end of a level, where you have to shut down the noise's propaganda broadcast, which will activate Pizza Time. Here, the pizza coins also had a different function, as instead of being used to buy a shotgun, they were now used to unlock a sort of challenge level for each stage. And these basically tested your skill using the transformations found in each level under a time limit, and they are honestly really challenging with the amount of time that you're given. Now, moving on to the end of 2018, there's one of the wackiest builds of Pizza Tower that was made. The Christmas Race Build, or the Grinch Build as it's colloquially known as, which was released just in time for Christmas on December 21st, 2018. Now this was apparently a joke build that was made for an event at the Pizza Tower Discord server, and yeah, as you can see, there are a lot of crudely made graphics implemented here, and in addition to Santa waving at us in the background, Pepino was given a nice festive color palette too. And the main gimmick of this build revolves around these flickering snow fellas, where if you touch them, the level will completely reset, putting you back at the start. So basically, you're tasked with getting through the entire level in only 3 minutes while doing your absolute best to avoid these at all costs. And not to mention, all attack moves were removed here, so the only way to defeat enemies is to dash through them. There's, of course, more memes found throughout this level, including a dancing Grinch, videos of Santa Claus, more Grinch, more Grinch, and, uh, more Grinch. And if you're a mad lad, you might recognize these Grinch memes are all from Grinch's Ultimatum. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this was made for an event at the Pizza Tower Discord server, and apparently the first three players to get to the end of the stage and send in a screenshot of this area would win free access to the first Patreon build that was going to be released. And although it may not look like it all dressed up like this, this stage is actually a very early version of what would eventually become Oregano Desert. And speaking of the first Patreon build, that one is up next, and this build was released on January 12th, 2019. There were originally plans to release a Patreon build every month, but unfortunately this didn't end up happening. Compared to the previous non-Grinch meme build that we covered, this build also had a desert and mansion level that were included. The desert level is rather short in this build and lacks any sort of UFO section that was eventually added, and then there's also the mansion stage, and this is a level that never ended up making to the final game outside of being just a secret hub world area. This build also finally replaced Peppino's slap move with the dash attack, which honestly I think was a great change. That said, when you do dash into an enemy, you still slap them around for a while, which is kind of annoying, but eh, it's a step in the right direction. And another neat addition that's seen in this build is with this pizza that's been added to the heads-up display. 
This is actually an early health system, and as you might expect, if you run out of pizza slices, Peppino will pinch his last ravioli, if you know what I mean. Yeah, unlike most builds of this game, here if Peppino takes enough damage, he will actually die and you will be sent back to the hub area, which speaking of which was starting to take more shape now. Anyways, the only way you could heal with this health system is by collecting pizza slices, but the only problem is, they're quite uncommon in this build, so you really can't be too careless with taking hits. The next major build is the March Patreon one that was released on March 7th, 2019, and this was the first build to be released where development was moved from Game Maker 1 to Game Maker 2. This time around, the hub area was ditched in favor of just having a level select menu right on the title screen, and on this menu, two additional levels can be seen compared to the previous public builds, Sewer and Freezer. In these levels, we can see several scrapped concepts that I've discussed in my previous videos, like the transformation blocks, unused enemies, and so forth. Probably the biggest highlight of this build, however, is that in the Freezer level, I believe this is the first public build where the Noise is actually a playable character, rather than appearing as an antagonist of sorts. He basically has the same moveset as Peppino here, save for being able to hold the jump button to slowly glide down, and interestingly, although he can build up lots of speed, he does get capped at Mach 2, and as such, can't break through metal blocks normally. The solution to this lies in a washing machine transformation here, where the noise will ride it and then can use it to break through the metal blocks, but ultimately, this transformation never ended up making it into the final game. But, the noise can still be seen riding a washing machine like this in the Wash and Clean Secret Overworld area. This level can be kind of janky with these mechanics, but I think it's still really cool to see how the noise was implemented in the earlier days of developing Pizza Tower. Then, after this, came the Optimization Test, build on March 22nd, 2019, and as the name implies, the main purpose of this build was to boost the game's performance, and this was mostly done by restructuring the amount of platform objects the game was using. Probably the most notable other difference is that this build finally introduced Lap 2 Pizza Portals that work as they do in the final version. So no longer did you have to backtrack all the way to the end of the level anymore, before running all the way back to the start for Lap 2. Next, being the 1st of April, it shouldn't surprise you that this next build was an April Fool's joke, and this is actually a build featuring a golf level. Yeah, before it was reworked into an entire level, the golf mechanic seems to only have been intended to be a joke. Anyways, this build only contains the single level, and here, much like the golf level seen in the final cut, Peppino is tasked with hitting the greaseball enemy from the start all the way to a hole at the end of the room in order to destroy the nerd block that's blocking the next area. The difficulty of these rooms varies, but unlike future builds, here you can't aim your hits as precisely, and you can only hit sideways and upwards, making this quite a bit more challenging and frustrating compared to the final version. There's also this really cool Doom-inspired graphic at the start of the level, and this is the first build of this video where Peppino can use his gun. This was a mechanic that was added, removed, and tweaked throughout development, but yeah, basically Peppino once had a ranged pistol attack. Then, after completing the level, the game will also reveal to you a few secret keys that you can press to change up the experience. Pressing F1 would enable Fun Mode, which basically just removes all of the nerd blocks, allowing you to freely roam between areas. And then pressing F2 allows you to play the build as the noise for some extra replayability. There's also one more key that the build doesn't mention, and that's pressing F9. By doing so, you will spawn in Fake Peppino, who at first doesn't bother you, and only after you activate Pizza Time, on your way back, he will finally start chasing you around and attack you near the exit. And I believe this is the first public appearance where Fake Peppino was revealed in a playable way. Now, moving on to late May of 2019, we have a few desert builds that were made. Here the hub world was starting to look more developed and even featured a pretty cool mechanic where getting close to a level entrance would change the background graphics to reflect that stage. Anyways, as the name of this build suggests, here we basically see an update to the old desert level with different layouts, the Kentucky Kenny enemies and the Firemouth ability were integrated into the level, the cave section was reworked, and the UFO part was finally added too. Additionally, Peppino's moveset was also different in the main version of this build. 
Wall running was removed, the speedometer now instantly just went from 0 to 5 on the heads up display graphics, and Pepino no longer slaps enemies around after grabbing them. These pizza TVs were also implemented, giving the player some pizza slices, which, you know, would have been nice to have back when that was part of the health system. And activating pizza time is also pretty unique here as well. Instead of anything we've seen so far, in this build instead, you just stumble upon an unassuming pizza box that just so happens to contain a noise bomb inside of it, which just instantly activates pizza time. Yeah, it's kinda strange. Another weird thing here is that although there's still background music, this build contains no sound effects, which makes playing it feel kind of off. Apparently, the sound effects were removed at this time in order to fix up some volume consistency issues. And lastly, beyond John Pillar here is another stage entrance, and apparently this one would take you to the mansion level, but without modding the game to remove John here, it's normally inaccessible to the player. Next up, we got the Blue Blockland build, or Purple Land Week 3 plus 1 build as it's labeled in the game, which was first released on July 3rd, 2019. As you can see, this build took a step back in the visuals department, and most platforms were now large purple blocks, or these purple fellas. We of course also got the placeholder graphics in the hub world that we went over in my previous videos. It's kind of strange that the last build seemed to be a step forward in developing the hub worlds, whereas this one feels like quite a step back. Anyways, here we have early versions of what became Pizzascape, Ancient Cheese, as well as Blood Sauce Dungeon. And although they're definitely playable, they aren't exactly what most would consider easy on the eyes. And as shown on the main title card graphics of these builds, which change between the different versions, it also introduced stuff like the Firebud transformation and, more importantly, a much more improved wall climbing ability for Peppino, bringing it much closer to his final moveset. Now next is I think probably one of the best received pre-release builds of Pizza Tower, and it's none other than the Sage 2019 build released on September 26th, 2019. Now, for those that don't know, SAGE stands for Sonic Amateur Game Expo, which is an annual community event where various Sonic-related projects are shared and shown off. And how is Pizza Tower related to Sonic the Hedgehog, you might be wondering? Well, aside from being a platformer relatively focused on speed at this point in development, it isn't really, and as such, the devs introduced the totally legally distinct mascot, Snick the Porcupine. We'll get back to Snick in a bit, but yeah, this build introduces a new title screen and area for entering the Sage building, which itself contains the hub world for this build. Inside, we get to meet Snick, as well as see the cool computer setups, which are the way of entering the levels in this build. Pizzascape, Ancient Cheese, and Blood Sauce Dungeon, but in a much improved visual state compared to the last build that we went over. There were also a few Sage builds leading up to the main one, which for the most part were pretty similar, except for some of the earlier ones also had contained one extra level known as Entrance. And this was an early version of the John Gutter stage, which served as an alternate intro tutorial level. Did I mention that the levels are much more polished now? Because they are, and they feel much better to play through. Here we also get to see the introduction of Pizza Marts as a way to buy the shotgun for Peppino, which is pretty sweet to use here. Anyways, all that stuff is nice and all, but now back to Snick. So, after completing all three of the levels in the Sage build, Snick's challenge would be unlocked, and this basically just had you running through each of the three levels again with a 10 minute limit while Snick EXE would haunt you and chase you around in each room. And upon completion of this, you would unlock the ability to play the build as Snick himself. And let me tell ya, Snick is definitely worth unlocking. He has a completely unique moveset, and although he lacks any attack moves, he builds up speed really fast without even needing to hold down the dash button, and much like Sonic, can do a peel-out dash by holding the dash button, basically letting you build up maximum speed wherever you want on the spot, which is incredibly useful. Furthermore, Snake is also shorter so he can fit through small gaps by default, and again similar to a certain blue hedgehog, Snick collects onion rings, loses all points when taking damage, and dies if there's no more points to be lost. And the level exits are also changed from the door to a signpost as well. I think these little details like this are so awesome. Snick also has unique graphics for the night, fire butt, and bomb transformations as I went over in my previous videos. 
Snick is incredibly fun to play as, so I think it's a real shame that these are the only builds where he was made playable. I don't know how likely it is at this point, but I really hope Snick eventually does get added to the release version of this game. And lastly, this build also introduced several achievements or cowboy tasks for the player to try and obtain, really adding to the replayability of this build. Honestly, compared to pretty much every other build we've seen so far, although it only contains 3 or 4 levels depending on which version you play, this pre-release build is a major step up. It was certainly a tough build to follow, but around a month later on October 30th, the Noises Hardoween build was released. Here we got to see a unique hub area that was exclusive to this build, where Snick makes his return covered in a sheet here, but unfortunately this is basically all we see of him here outside of some background objects in the level. Anyways, Noises Hardoween contains a single level this time, Pizza Scare, and as the name implies, here you play as the Noise, and Pizza Scare is a harder version of Pizza Scape. And yeah, not only does the noise use a different color palette, but so does the level itself and all of the enemies found within it. Throughout this stage, we can also see various festive little set-piece graphics, and these were actually made by the community in a competition where whoever made the best props would get them added into the demo. Honestly, I found this build pretty difficult, especially pizza time, so I think the hard and hardoween is certainly warranted. Another month went by, and now on November 30th, 2019, a co-op build was made, which added co-op, go figure. We've discussed this in my previous videos, but if you didn't know, yeah, there were once plans, and apparently still ongoing plans, to incorporate cooperative play in Pizza Tower, where two players could play as Peppino and The Noise to get through a level. Then on December 30th, 2019, just in time for Christmas, the Peppino's Xmas Break build was released. Similarly to the previous Halloween-themed build, this one features a Christmas reskinned level, this time for Blood Sauce Dungeon, known here as Stronghold. And just like Pizza Scare, this too is a more difficult version of the regular level, and here we also get to see various really cool level set pieces like enemies caroling, as well as a Game Boy Advance copy of Pizza Tower which I thought was incredibly rad. And these, just like with the Halloween demo, were made by members of the Pizza Tower community as a part of another competition. Probably the highlight of this level though is that it incorporates a fight against the Noise exclusive to this build where it was revealed that the Noise was Santa Claus all along. Essentially here, the Noise will pop up out of one of the five gift boxes on screen and you have to rush over to hit him before he starts to move again. You're only given 99 seconds to hit the noise 20 times, so you really have to be on the ball in order to defeat him. And then, after completing the level once, here you would also unlock the noise as a playable character with, of course, a festive color palette, and you would also get a simple time attack mode as well. Overall, a pretty slick little Christmas build of the game. Now, moving on to the year where absolutely nothing went wrong with the world, in early January we got a few builds that were centered around reworking the Noise's moveset. The biggest change was that he would now use a pogo stick to bounce around and quickly build up speed, he was given a double jump, an ability to cling to a wall and jump off of it, and then probably the best addition is that after building up speed with two pogo bounces, he will start flashing and then after pressing the dash button, he will utilize his jetpack which basically works like an on-demand rocket transformation. Much like Snick earlier, this new moveset really shakes up the game I find, so I think it's really too bad that this alternate moveset was eventually axed. Next up is the Cheese Dragon boss build from February 1st, 2020. Right off the bat, you'll notice that we got yet another hub world here, and this is one of the ones that I went over being left over unused in the final game in a previous video. Anyways, in addition to almost all of the other levels being available here, the Dragon Layer stage was also introduced, and this was initially intended to be a sort of boss level for World 1. Basically, after hitting a few buttons to spawn in some Power Ranger-inspired top-in warriors, this was a gauntlet-type stage that would feature various enemies, transformations, and such from the World 1 levels. The time limit for the stage is pretty interesting too. It's essentially broken up into one-minute chunks, and after each runs out, Pizza Face will come in and steal away one top-in warrior, and only after all five are gone will you get a times up and fail, so basically you do have five minutes-ish to complete the stage. 
And of course, we can't forget the reason that this is called the boss build, as these fellas are added as obstacles at a few sections in the level. To defeat them, you simply just have to carry around and throw an object at them and they'll fly away. Although not a crazy addition to the game, I really like the design of these guys, but hey, at least they made their way into the final game in the old castle secret hub area. Then, less than a week later, the first level editor build was made on February 6th, 2020, and yeah, as the name suggests, this introduced a level editor. There's not too much to say about this, it's a rather basic level editing tool that lets you place down various tiles, objects, enemies, and more. And then of course, you can also play through your very well thought out concoction as well. It should also be noted that this level editor was developed by Certif before they eventually became a programmer for Pizza Tower. So really, this was basically a mod for the game that was given the official stamp of approval. Next, on February 16th of 2020, the Desert Playtest 1 build was made, and this featured yet another reworked version of Oregano Desert. Changes here include this door being locked up now, actually requiring you to enter this Pizza Mart to find the key, the UFO section was changed to incorporate using the Firemouth transformation, and now the noise boulder traps were added as part of going through the level, instead of just on the way back during pizza time as it was in the prior versions. You actually have to use these boulders sometimes to be pushed through some platform, so if you dodge them, you'll have to leave the area and try again, which can be quite annoying. Then, about a week later, another level was seen in the Graveyard playtest, and this of course was an early version of the Waste Yard. It's clear that this is a very early version of the stage, and it's very much incomplete, so much so that this build was actually eventually taken down by the developers. This level also introduces the first time in these builds where we see the ghost transformation that was originally obtained by getting blasted by the ranch shooter fella, and I guess since the tombstone graphics weren't implemented yet, they default to using other graphics like toilets, happy faces, and more. This build also re-adds Peppino's shotgun after it was removed for a while, so it looks like the idea of featuring it in the graveyard level was at least toyed around with. Anyways, much like the purple block levels from earlier, these levels aren't very nice to look at here. Next up, we have the Western builds from late April 2020, where the first two of these were the first ones to feature the Vigilante as a playable character. By the third Western build, however, both the Noise as well as the Vigilante were removed, and the Noise was even also taken away from the character select menu. And in addition to that, we got two more levels that were added compared to the previous builds that we've covered. An early version of Fun Farm, as well as Space Pinball, a level that itself was scrapped, but had parts of it reworked into Fast Food Saloon and Deep Dish 9. Then as far as the early version of Fun Farm, much like most of these early versions, it's quite different from the final one. At this point, there was seemingly a much bigger emphasis on puzzles and more precise platforming rather than just mostly speed. And we of course can't skip over talking about Mort, whose functionality was also quite different here. He didn't have a double jump here, and instead you could slowly glide down after holding the jump button. And you would need Mort here in order to break through these comically large 3D rotating cubes featuring the render of Mort from his PS1 box art. Hell yeah. Then, skipping over the second level editor build, since it's not currently publicly documented as I make this video, the third one was released on May 13th, 2020. Not much to really say about this one besides that in addition to adding some new objects and enemies and such from the levels developed since the previous iteration, instead of starting the player in the old World 1 hub area, here we are introduced to a new menu with an online aspect where you can make an account and upload your levels as well as browse those that others have made. Unfortunately, the servers for this have been shut down several years ago at this point, so none of that is functional anymore. Moving on, next are the beach and forest builds from early July of 2020, and I'll give you two guesses as to what these introduced. If you guessed early versions of Crust Cove and Gnome Forest, you win a free pizza. Highlights here include the beach stage featuring an idea that was scrapped where you would first start the stage in a ship, and then for the forest stage, this was a point in development before Gustavo and Brick were playable, as here you had to deliver Gustavo's pizza to the customers in the level as Peppino instead. Another neat thing about this build is that here it introduced the breakdance move for Peppino, which before being turned into a little neat extra meme for holding down the taunt button, was actually a more proper part of his moveset and could lead to Peppino rolling around similarly to the ball transformation. 
Late July also had the fourth and final level editor build, and just like the last one, this one too introduced even more objects that could be added. Not much else to say about it, so let's move on. Now moving several months forward, next is a build officially simply just known as the Playtest build, but it has been dubbed by some fans as the Pre-J Leno April build. Apparently referencing a time before McPig briefly changed his Discord profile picture to a J Leno looking Joker. But anyways, this build was released on February 25th of 2021. Having like half a year of dev time since the previous build we went over, there are several differences here compared to the last one. We got a new title screen as well as several additional levels, Kung Fu, Space, City, Kids Party, as well as War, which here looks like it was originally planned for World 4 instead of 5 as is seen in later builds. As such, at this point, pretty much most of the levels seen in the final game were now included in one way or another. Some levels, like War, are obviously unfinished, and here we can see a scrapped turret enemy which uses a placeholder graphic and it will blast away at Peppino if he's seen. In the space level, we can also see an early version of the rocket transformation, which at this point in development just uses a simple boost conveyor belt thing to activate it instead of a rocket. Furthermore, the golf, sewer, factory, mansion, and freezer levels were all redone and are now quite different compared to how we saw them in earlier builds. Some highlights of these stages include the sewer level making use of the old way the sticky cheese transformation worked in which it would let you cling to walls and walk along them, and then the freezer level made use of an eventually scrapped thermometer mechanic which kind of similar to how heating works in the final version of it, here parts of the level would melt away as you raise the temperature higher and higher, and of course we get to see a very crude early graphic of that on the side here. Gameplay was also tweaked a bit at this point as Peppino's gun was reintroduced and could hold up to three rounds for it at a time, and the heat meter that we've discussed in my previous videos was added, although no heads-up display graphics were implemented outside of just some text indicating if it was going up or down. And here it seems the heat system was implemented to the point where enemies still changed color palettes if the heat level was high enough. Another big addition is that this is the first build covered here where Jerome was added. Originally, he would function a bit differently though compared to the final cut of the game. Instead of him being a secret that you would need to find in a level, he would have just chilled at the start and you could only get him to follow you after pizza time was activated and then you'd have to backtrack all the way back to the end of the level where the Jerome door is typically located. So, in a way, this is a resurgence of the old backtracking version of lap 2 that we saw earlier. And lastly for this build, although it's not implemented in full by default, some enemies drop gas canisters that were meant to have been used as ammo of sorts for Peppino's chainsaw, a scrapped ability in which he would wield a pizza cutter chainsaw to presumably rip through enemies and other obstacles. Anyways, overall, the game at this point was getting much closer to the final version. And now we move on to the April build referenced in the last one, and this was made on April 3rd, 2021. In addition to the levels being updated and stuff like the rocket transformation now actually using the rocket, the heads-up display was also greatly improved. The heat meter was now made visible, the speedometer was removed, the ammo counter was now moved below the heat meter where it was now seen as some bouncing ammunition, and of course the TV display as it's seen in the final was implemented where it would display in-game status effects and such. Next up come the rework builds of the game from September of 2021, where lead developer McPig decided to try and rework many parts of the game. For one, he wanted to rework how wall running was implemented, so instead of just being able to wall run after running and jumping into a wall, you could now only do it by running up a ramp instead. Now this alone completely changes how the game plays, and as such, this build is pretty divisive, with many fans not enjoying it nearly as much. The hub world was also completely revamped here and was massive. Basically parts of the hub world would open up piece by piece as levels were completed and bosses were defeated. Many of the levels were also different and many later scrapped things we've discussed in my previous videos could be seen including fake Peppino chasing you around, being able to possess enemies with the ghost transformation, as well as an early and much different version of the FNAF inspired don't make a sound level. There's also of course the scrapped Mr. Stick boss fight here, as well as the early versions of the other boss fights in the boxing ring where health bars were used, and the fight against Pizza Head that used the concept sketches as placeholders is here too. 
there is a lot to this build, so just briefly talking about it here certainly doesn't do it justice, but if you're interested in seeing more of it, check out my recent stream where I played through a good chunk of it by checking out the card on the top right of the screen or the link in the description. Then after almost another year passing, the next major build I want to go over was released on June 13th, 2022, and this was known as the Eggplant build. By this point, not only were graphics added to the level select menu indicating how many top-ins and secrets were found, but the levels once again got overhauled and polished up to now much closer resemble how they are seen in the final release. And true to the naming of this build, as ranks were being reworked around this time, the ranking graphic on the heads-up display was now a temporary eggplant, and upon completion of a level, a unique animation was also used where Pepina would flash an eggplant, with text indicating that ranks were still yet to be set. Now moving up to only three months before the final release of the game, we have the October build from October 26th, 2022. Being so close to release, the game is now much more similar, but there are still a few of the many differences I noticed immediately when booting it up. Although the main menu is similar, it still lacks many details, the World 1 hub area has a much different layout that makes it feel more streamlined, no hub secrets have been added yet, a tower climbing cutscene is used when moving between worlds, similar to the one seen all the way back in some of the earliest builds, and what I thought was extra cool with these is that there's a unique background used for moving between each floor. And then World 5 is still pretty unfinished in this build, lacking many details, and the area leading up to the top of the tower is also far from being finished here. Another rather funny thing I noticed is that here, each boss fight still uses a different scream sound effect as a placeholder, and it straight up just does not suit them well at all. Another thing you might notice about the boss fights is that here they use an old version of the health meter where instead of a 2x5 system, a 2x4 one was used, and differently colored layers were also implemented. I guess this was maybe changed as this would essentially give away that you would expect more phases to the boss fight as it went on. After about another month of development, on November 27th, 2022, a build known simply as Pizza Tower was built. The amount of differences here shrinks even more, but some highlights I noted including bosses use a scrapped fist indicator graphic of when you can damage them instead of just flashing. The hub secret areas were added in, but some entrances are found in slightly different spots. The entrance door to World 4 is in a different spot and is found all the way down by the sewer level, and the crumbling Tower of Pizza level entrance here is right by the World 5 entrance instead of being up in the long hallway near the top of the tower. The next build I want to make note of is known as Steam Build 1, and this is from December 11th, 2022. Here we can see that the intro cutscene is now implemented, but there's also a really strange quirk here that I haven't seen in any other build. So for starters, not only is the scrapped Cheese Dragon boss found in the World 1 secret hub area, but he's found in all of them, and he's also found just floating off in the void sometimes too. Then, in addition to this, if you enter any of the hub secrets and then enter the boss fight of that floor, the Cheese Dragon will also make a fine little appearance in the background of that fight too. I thought this was a neat little bonus easter egg for players that found the secret rooms, and I kinda like this implementation. I guess though, the decision was later made to dial it back on the Cheese Dragon's appearances. And now, the last pre-release build I want to touch on in this video is the almost finished game playtest build that was made on January 6th of 2023. Things are now largely the same as the final game, seeing as how it was released only a few weeks later, but one thing that did stand out to me was this quit game graphic that was added to the title screen. This was removed in the final game, and I can kinda see why. You use that button to skip through the opening cutscene, so maybe it was deemed that some players would have inadvertently pressed the button and quit the game by accident. Oh yeah, and the John and Snotty approved graphics were also added in this build, which is pretty slick. Now there are a few more builds that were made after this one, but they're basically the same as the final release, so I think we'll call it here. I hope you enjoyed this little trip through many of the pre-release builds of Pizza Tower leading up to its release, making for one of the longest videos I've ever made. As you saw, this game had quite the development cycle. Alright, and now a bit of bonus content for those of you watching this compilation. There's still boatloads of stuff that I won't get around to covering, but here are a few more things that I missed in my videos. 
For starters, there are a whole bunch more graphics left over in the game that go unused. These include really basic placeholder graphics, one vertical magenta one with a red angle on it, and this was a placeholder for the cardboard tank enemy. And then similarly, there's this horizontal block that was a placeholder for a car. Then there's an early placeholder sketch of the horsey mechanic that's seen in the fast food saloon level, and this was actually seen in at least one of the demo builds. And then there's this placeholder sketch for the Gabagool enemies. Then next, there are several enemy graphics that aren't normally seen in Pizza Tower. These include the Noisies jumping, which is a remnant from them actually being recurring enemies in the game rather than just part of the noise boss fight. Then there's this unused animation of the Pinacools doing a spin move and then striking a pose, and this was apparently part of a scrapped behavior where they would do this to the beat of the background music in a given level, much like how some enemies jump to the music in the new Super Mario Bros. games. Then there's an unused idle animation for the Eggplant Mobile, a death graphic for the Big Cheese enemy that's a remnant from older builds where they could actually be defeated, but in the final cut of the game, they're invincible, so yeah, this goes unused. Then there are a few unused animations for the Cheese Slimes that are a leftover from very early stages of this game's development, and this includes them turning around, getting bounced on, as well as falling. And then lastly, there are some leftovers from earlier versions of the FNAF-inspired Don't Make a Sound level. These include the Pineapple Toppin smiling, and although only one frame of this animation is normally seen as part of the Toppin's taunt, the rest of the animation was part of a scrapped mechanic where the Pineapple Toppin monster would spawn in when this Toppin smiled like this. And then there are also unused walking animations for the Mushroom and Cheese Toppin monsters that were seen in earlier versions of the level where they would be seen walking around freely in their respective part of the stage. Now one last thing I want to talk about for the Don't Make a Sound level are the jump scares. For starters, there's this unused graphic of a scrapped plan for the Pineapple Toppin monster being able to jump scare the player. In the final cut of the stage, the Pineapple monster can't jump scare you and can only spawn in more enemies. And of course, now speaking of the jump scares, so many of you have left comments about this that I just had to include it here. Although not left over in the files of the game, apparently there were plans for the jump scares in the stage to be 3D, much like in the Five Nights at Freddy's games, rather than the 2D style that matches the rest of Pizza Tower as is normally seen. It's not known for certain why these were cut, but honestly, they do look pretty unsettling to me. Anyways, we'll leave it there, and this will probably make this the longest video I've ever uploaded to the channel. So, thank you so much for making it to the end here, subscribe to find your way back here in the future, and as always, I will see you in a bit.